Hey guys, okay, so if you're going to do a lot of watercoloring, at some point you're going to want to watercolor on a sheet of just loose paper like this that's not on a board or anything. This is a sheet of Strathmore Cold Press 400 series watercolor, 140 pound watercolor paper. And you could definitely put this onto a board, um, you know, soak it and get it wet, put it onto a board with some gum tape and let it dry and I've done that I've only done it once this is the gummed tape it's um, it, you know it looks kind of like but old-fashioned butcher butcher tape but it's called gummed tape and you get it at the art supply store um, then when it dries the paper shrinks up really tight and it's very taut now it's pretty tricky to do and uh, you know when I've done it in the past it's hit or miss <laughs> sometimes it works well Sometimes not so much. I don't know if I get the tape too wet or what. I heard about this alternative way, and I'll tell you, I'll talk about this in a minute. I heard about this alternative way to stretch your paper that I thought I would, it wasn't very expensive, so I thought I'd get one and try. This is uh, from Ken Bromley Art Supplies in the UK, and this is a perfect, called a perfect paper stretcher. And this particular one doesn't say how big it is. Let's see. It's about nine and a half by like 13 and a half, somewhere in there. Um, it's a wooden, it comes with instructions. It's a wooden board and it's got these um, rubber pieces on the side. And basically, again, you soak. You're gonna. I'm gonna soak my paper for five minutes. Then we're gonna put it around the board, and we are gonna use these pieces of rubber in the groove to attach the paper to the, the board. I'm gonna show you what I mean. I'm gonna try to remember to link. Um, Ken Bromley Art Supply has a video on this perfect paper stretcher on YouTube, as do a couple of other people. Um, I'll try to remember to link it below, but if I forget, do a search. That's how I found out about them. And I'm going to pull these out because we'll need to pull them out anyway. Alright, and then we're going to set the board aside and the instructions in a safe place. Let's click them up so they're out of the way. Alright, so we've got our paper here. and This is an acrylic block... Uh, blah 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 <laughs> an acrylic box frame this is a fairly large one because I wanted to be able to soak different sizes of paper because if this board works this board does come in a couple other sizes and if this board works I might want to buy one bigger size so I wanted this acrylic box frame to accommodate that in the future um, anyway this is an acrylic box frame you can get them anywhere um, your arts and crafts supply, your framing supply, they're not expensive. I just pulled the cardboard box backing thing out and you're left with this clear acrylic tray that's perfect for soaking a piece of paper. So I have some water here and we're going to just pour this on here enough to cover the paper. And then we're going to let it soak for five minutes. And when we come back, we'll see how we can get this on the paper stretcher. We'll see if it works. I'll be back. Okay, five minutes are up. I've gotten a towel, a clean towel out of my rag bin. And let's get the paper following the directions. It's nice and wet now. We're going to lay it on the clean surface. It says to put the board face down. Now, it doesn't say you have to do this, but I did get the board a little bit wet. I sprayed it with a little water. I'm going to center it in the paper. It does say the paper should be about three quarters of an inch bigger than the board. All right. Then it says to um, flip it over. Let's try to get my hair out of there. And remove the excess moisture. 
by placing a towel or kitchen paper roll over the paper surface and lightly press down, which we did. We don't want to get it too dry. Then it says to fold the lightly press down and bend the paper over the edges of the board. How about if we get it centered first? Because, you know, that would be helpful, I think. <laughs> okay. Um, nip the corners of the paper. Turn the board on its side. Okay, let's see. Like that. Place the first gripper. That's what these black things are called, grippers. All right, so I need a long one. And I've got a wooden mallet here to whack them in with. Okay. All right. Repeat on the three sides. It does say when you watch the video to give it a slight tug when you do the opposite side, which I just did. Because you really want to pull that paper pretty taut. And I'm working my way from the center out. Last one. Look at that. It's not even dry and it's tight as a drum. Now it says you could dry it with a hair dryer or just leave it out to dry. I'm going to just leave it out to dry and we will come back to it and we'll see what it looks like in a little bit. It shouldn't take too long to dry and I'm going to I'm going to put it up on top of something. Oh, maybe my jar of art guard so that it gets good air circulation and we'll see We'll see what happens when it dries, but so far I gotta tell you guys, I'm really impressed. That was way easier than working with gummed tape, I gotta tell ya. Um, you know, the only thing is that you're limited to whatever size of board you have. But boy, I like it. So I might need to go get a couple more sizes of these boards. He doesn't make them in a lot of sizes, but... I'm going to try to remember to add them into my Amazon shop so that if you guys want the board and mallet, which I did buy separately, um, they will be in my Amazon shop. And I will be back in a few minutes, or a few seconds for you, a few minutes for me, when this is dry and we'll see what our results are. All right, I'll be back. Okay, hey guys. So my watercolor paper is almost completely dry. It's still a little bit cold, which means it's still a little bit damp. but. Um, I gotta tell you, I'm completely impressed. It was so easy. It's tight as a drum. There's no air bubbles. I love this so much more than messing with the gummed paper tape. This is the quarter imperial size. It is nine and a half by thirteen and a half. Ken Bromley does make two other sizes. Half imperial, which is thirteen and a half by twenty and a half inches and full imperial which is 20 by 28 inches now amazon usa our amazon here in the states only carries the quarter imperial if you want the other two sizes you have to go through ken bromley's web website and order them through his website um, he does ship internationally um, 
but I don't know what the shipping is going to cost. So I am going to um, I have to save up a little bit, but I do think I want at least one more si size. This is the smallest. I do think I want one more bigger size. I may want both, but the 20 by 28 is awfully big, and I don't know that I'd ever do a watercolor painting that's that big. That's really big. <laughs> you never know. You should never say never, but it, but that's really big. Um, this is a good standard size. Um, this is a good size to do a painting on and then put a mat and, you know, give it a frame. And it's a, it's a good size. So anyway, I'd start with this one. I love it. I give it double thumbs up. All right, so give it a try. If you want to if you want to try it less expensively than buying this board and a mallet and all that, then go for the gummed paper tape. It there, you know, it does take some practice to work with to get it right, um, but it does work and it's less expensive than buying the perfect paper stretcher. I will try to remember to include some links not only for the perfect paper stretcher but for doing uh, stretching your paper using the gum tape. Um, in the description below for so for so look for them if I forget leave a comment and I'll, I'll try to remember to add them in all right that's it for right now don't forget to like and subscribe I'm glad you stayed and watched and don't forget to go out and have a good day and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it and I'll see you later